Okay, pilots, let's see if you can answer this trivia question. <clears throat> this Drain Drill Nation established its own elite fighter squadron in the late 1990s. Its objective was to carry out covert operations that incited wars between other nations in order to keep their nation safe. <laughs> All right, let's see what the card says. Uh, my helmet is making it hard to read the answer. Let me just... There, that's better. So, the answer is... Nordenovic? I think this calls for a little history lesson. Hello, pilots. Salutis Eversol here. And yes, I am going to be talking about Nordenovic. In my previous video for Strange Real History, link in the description, I talked about two Onion nations, Emeria and Estovakia. But there is an area I didn't highlight. You guessed correctly, Nordenovic. I originally planned to include this nation in my previous video, but the major events concerning Nordenovic occurred after Ulysses Day, which is playable in the game Ace Combat Northern Wings. But Mr. Soul, what the heck is Northern Wings? I've never even heard of this game. Ace Combat Northern Wings was a Java game for mobile phones released back in December 2011. It was a top-down 2D game instead of a 3D game. It contained 10 playable missions where you played as Grendel 1, an ace pilot of the Nordenovic Royal Air Force's Grendel Squadron. The game's plot spans from September 3, 1999, two months after the Ulysses 1994XF04 impact, through April 1, 2016, the end of the Ameria Estovakia War. Although the story takes place in the Strange Real Universe, it isn't confirmed if the missions within the game are canon, because six of the missions either coincide or contradict playable missions from Ace Combat 4, 5, and 6. So, everyone agreed that this game is just a spin-off. But Mr. Soul, why even bother making a video about a spin-off mobile game when most of its story contradicts the Strange Real timeline? Well, there are not a lot of videos that dissect the missions of Northern Wings as well as talk about the game itself. I think it would be fun to see whether or not each mission fits or contradicts the Strange Real timeline. Plus, it would be a great opportunity to learn more about this neutral nation known as Nordenovic. So, let's get this briefing started. Nordenovic, aka the Kingdom of Nordenovic, is the third nation located west of Emeria. Its geography isn't too varied, you're only gonna find lakes, forests, and some mountains. The country is also known for its thriving machine industry, which greatly contributes to its economy. Unlike its next door neighbor, Nordenovic is ruled by a monarch, and throughout its history, each and every one of its kings has kept the ongoing tradition of maintaining strict diplomatic neutrality. Nordenovic does have a military, but their soldiers are solely trained to defend their nation from would-be invaders. That's it. They don't have any desire to send troops to fight in conflicts outside their own borders. Heck, they don't even want to pick a side. That's how neutral Nordenovic wants to be. But what happens when their policy of neutrality is threatened? Well, Grendel Squadron is Nordenovic's answer to that horrifying question. Mission 1 takes place in Nordenovic on September, just after the asteroid fragments of Ulysses finish slamming into the northern hemisphere of the planet. Luckily, Nordenovic was unharmed. They only had one asteroid impact uh, within their borders, but nothing too bad. But its next door neighbors and nations in Usia received the most damage. Due to the destruction and chaos Ulysses brought to these stricken nations, Nordenovic feared that their treasured neutrality that they kept for centuries would soon be compromised by foreign wars. To prevent this outcome from happening, the NRAF created the top secret Grendel Squadron. Its mission? To covertly influence skirmishes and wars between other nations in order to ensure Nordenovic safety. They can't fight you if you have them fighting someone else. Unlike other squadrons, Grendel has the privilege to fly some of Nordenovic's advanced jet fighters. The notable plane that they fly is the Avakir 50 which is a combination of the F-22 Raptor and the F-23 Black Widow. As usual with most video games, the first mission is just the tutorial. Grendel is being tested to see if he is qualified to join the newly formed Grendel Squadron. Plot twist. He passes and becomes Grendel 1. 
In summary, Mission 1 doesn't really conflict with the Strange Real Timeline. Both Mission 2 and Mission 3 take place close to the Erujian border on August 3rd, 2000 during the Usian Refugee Crisis. In Mission 2, Grendel's squadron has to prevent the Erujians from shooting down the helicopter transporting the General Assembly Commissioner, I believe from the Usia Treaty Organization but it doesn't clarify too much, on his way to inspect the Ulysses refugee camps. Eruja's government does not want the General Assembly Commissioner to see the poor conditions of the camps gathered outside their border. Grendel's squadron is successful and the transport chopper makes it to the site unharmed. But soon after, Mission 3 begins on the same day. Grendel Squadron needs to protect the transport planes carrying refugees from being shot down from the Erujians because they want to hide the fact that they refuse to help the refugees. Well, that's rude, Eruja. As usual, Grendel is successful and the refugees are safely transported to Nordenavik. Since these two missions are unique in that they happen when a war is not taking place on Usia, I can see Mission 2 and 3 both fitting into the canon timeline without any problems. Now, we fast forward to October 10th, 2004, where Mission 4 begins during the Usian Continental War. Grendel's objective is to aid ISAF's Air Force in destroying Erujian occupied radar stations in Mount Chesna. This mission also happens simultaneously with Mission 3 in Ace Combat 4, where Mobius 1 and ISAF's Air Force need to destroy the radar stations also on Mount Chesna. Grendel is able to achieve the mission without any problems. The Northern Skies version doesn't contradict the canon timeline too much, but if I had to criticize one thing about Mission 4, it's that the top secret squadron that Nordenovic does not want the world to know about is flying in the same combat zone with ISAF. Grendel is clearly going to be sticking out like a sore thumb, because they are flying unique advanced jet fighters compared to ISAF's standard issue planes. Hey Greg? Yes Paul? Who do you think in ISAF is flying that advanced looking fighter jet? I don't know. Also, why is his plane not in the same color scheme as our planes? Hmm, huh. you make a good argument there. Hey you, the one with the weird looking plane! If they want to help ISAF while not blowing their own cover, Grendel needs to fly regular planes painted in the ISAF color scheme. Then they can perform the mission, fake their own deaths towards the end of the mission, and leave the combat zone. But this is just a small nitpick. So besides that, mission 4 is okay. Alrighty, so the next three missions in Northern Wings happen simultaneously with three missions from Ace Combat 5, my personal favorite game in the series. And all three of these missions revolve around the Ark Bird. The Arkbird was a maneuverable, low-orbiting spacecraft conceived during the Cold War by the Ocean Federation in order to counteract Yuktobania's advancements in SLBM technology. The Arkbird eventually became a symbol of peace and cooperation between the two superpowers in the years after the Balkan War. In the canon timeline, the Arkbird was manufactured by Osea and then later Yuktobania, but in Northern Wings, it is hinted that Nordenovic secretly had a hand with the construction of the Arkbird. Ah, got some deep dark secrets, don't we Nordenovic? Mission 5 of Northern Wings takes place on October 4th, 2010 during Mission 7 of Ace Combat 5. Yuktobania is launching a large amphibious assault against Osea's small island airbase, Sand Island. Nordenovic says, nah, that ain't happening, and gives orders to one of the astronauts loyal to Nordenovic to use the Arkbird's laser to sink the invading ships. Oh boy. For those of you who played Ace Combat 5, this definitely did not happen. What actually happened was that ships were sunk by War Dog Squadron while the Arkbird used its laser to intercept and eliminate ballistic missiles launched from the Yuktobanian submarine Synfaxi. The Arkbird would later use the laser to hit only one Yuk naval vessel, which was the Synfaxi. So, in summary, Mission 5 does not fit in the canon timeline. But, you at least get to operate the laser weapon from a famous super weapon from the series. Moving on to Mission 6 of Northern Wings, which takes place on October 22nd, 2010, close to Sand Island. Yuktobania is trying to launch a second invasion against Sand Island. With the Arkbird inoperable due to sabotage from what was assumed to be Yuktobanian's work at the time, Grendel's objective is to intercept and destroy the second Yuktobanian invasion fleet. 
War Dog Squadron was not present at the time since they were busy with another mission. Despite these setbacks, Grendel Squadron was able to successfully sink all of the ships and save Sand Island. In the canon timeline, there was never any indication that Yuke Delbania was getting a second invasion fleet ready throughout Ace Combat 5. But we could theorize that the fleet was far enough away from the island and Grendel was able to destroy it before it could become a real threat. Overall, Mission 6 could be added to the canon timeline with some minor tweaks to the mission. In Mission 7, Nordanavian intelligence has learned that a secret Belkin group known as the Greymen were responsible for orchestrating the war between Osea and Yuktobania. And the Greymen's next plan is to fly the Belkin-controlled Arkbird to fly and crash into the Osean capital, Aurid. Wait, whoa, wait a minute, that's not right. In Ace Combat 5, the Grey Men's plan was to fly the Arkbird over Akshaburst, Yuktobania, and drop a V-1 nuclear warhead. At the last minute, the Belkin-controlled Arkbird would then choose to fly over Osea and crash the Arkbird into a populated city because they were being attacked by Rosgri's squadron. Okay, maybe in Northern Wings, Grendel is probably tasked to fight off a large fighter squadron of Belkin planes, while Rosgri destroys the Arkbird. Northern Wings couldn't possibly change the story. <laughs> What have you done? Seriously? What, you're telling me that during the mission, Roz Grease was going through the drive-thru of the OFC to get some buckets of fried chicken while Grendel destroyed the Ark Bird? No! No, that didn't happen. As I said before, the credit goes to Roz Grease. What I think would have been better is to have Grendel take on a large force of Belkin fighters while Roz Grease destroyed the Ark Bird. In summary, Mission 7 blatantly contradicts the canon timeline, therefore it does not fit. Okay, 7 missions down, 3 to go. Let's talk about the last 3 missions of Northern Wings which take place over the continent of Anya. In Mission 8 of Northern Wings, Nordanovic is keeping their eyes on the events of the Estovakian Civil War. They fear that if the Lay's United Front is victorious, they could threaten to destroy Nordanovic's diplomatic neutrality. So. They decided to aid the Eastern Faction, and on January 15th, 2013, Grendel Squadron helps the Eastern Faction win the Civil War. This is the only mission that takes place during the Estovakian Civil War in the entire series. So, this mission does not contradict the canon timeline. Give it a green checkmark. Mission 9 of Northern Wings takes place on August 30th, 2015, during Mission 1 of Ace Combat 6. Emeria's capital, Grace Maria, is being invaded by the Estovakians. Nordanovic feels guilty that their intervention in the Estovakian Civil War has led to this outcome. They decide to send the Grendel Squadron to fight off the Estovakian planes and naval vessels in order to help as many Emerian citizens to safely evacuate the capital. I can also give Mission 9 a green checkmark as well, because throughout the game, Ace Combat 6, it is known that Nordanovic did accept Amerian refugees escaping the Estovakian military. So, green checkmark it. Now, on to the last mission of Northern Wings. And, uh, it's an interesting one. The mission takes place on April 1st, 2016, the same day the Amerian Air Force is flying to destroy the recently completed Estovakian superweapon, Chandelier. But, Grendel 1 is not tasked to help destroy Chandelier. No, no. In order for the Amerians to achieve their mission, Grendel 1 has to fly the experimental Avakir 55, an experimental fighter jet that can hover. His objective is to destroy an anti-air weapon system that protects Chandelier. It has anti-air weapons, as well as a shield to deflect any attacks against its hull. Oh, did I mention it's got legs to move around? Yes, it's got legs to move around. Well, despite these crazy design features, Grendel 1 is successful in taking out the anti-air weapon system before it could destroy the Amerian Air Force. With the Amerian Air Force successful in destroying Chandelier, Grendel 1 returns to Nordnavik and the squadron received the Star of Valor. And that's where the story of Northern Wings ends. So, what do I think about Mission 10? Well, 
I think it could possibly fit into the canon timeline. I mean, it's kind of weird that the Amerians didn't find out about this four-legged walking anti-air weapon system with shields and lasers. But for this decision, I want to hear what you guys think. Do you think Mission 10 of Northern Wings could fit into the canon timeline without causing problems? Or do you think it doesn't fit? Leave your thoughts and ideas down in the comments below. Overall, for a spin-off mobile game, there are missions that I like and those that I strongly disagree with. <clears throat> Looking at you, Mission 7. But hey, at the end of the day, the missions and the plot of this game are non-canon. Whew, that took a while. But that was fun, and now you know more about Northern Wings. If you enjoyed this video and my other videos, please hit the like and subscribe button if you want to see more Strange Real history. As always, thank you so much for watching. My name is Salutis Eversoul, and I'll see you next time. Soul out.